As the great Nuke Lelouch said regarding baseball, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes it rains. Think about that. And sometimes you get blown the F out by 15 plus run. Today you're going to learn about each Major League Baseball team's worst blowout. And that's coming up right after this. It's time to be enlightened about some games that were over before they started, over when they started, and in all cases, over a 16 run difference between the winner and the loser. We'll tell you the most interesting stat lines, useless facts, and of course, all the schadenfreude you can handle. <laughs> Naturally, these are ordered from lowest to highest. For once, the Rockies put up a bunch of runs away from Coors Field as they beat up on the Astros when Houston was in the throes of their intentional tank. Kevin Kausmanoff went three for six with two dings and five ribs. Every Rocky starter got a hit and scored a run. Xavier Cedeno received the worst shelling. In one inning, he got tagged for five hits, five runs, and he definitely earned them all. Sometimes a sub-500 team beats up on another one. The Reds used a 12-run sixth inning to blow up a game they were only leading by two at the time, while three of their pitchers combined on a shutout. It's hard to win when you don't score any runs, right? Brad Woodall started the six and gave up six runs before Joe Hudson got one out and gave up six of his own, and his ERA jumped to 162 after that. Two hated rivals, two playoff teams, one ugly drubbing. Zach Grinke not only tossed six blank frames, he also went two for three and homered. Tim Hudson only lasted one inning and gave up six earned runs. The Giants would have the last laugh as they ended up winning the World Series that year. And what looks like our first football score, the Mariners got used like a dish rag. Mike Hampton, who I had no idea was once a Mariner, got pulled after 2.2 innings while Travis Fryman went 4 for 5 with 5 runs scored. Alan Trammell somehow managed to go 0 for 4 and Rob Deere walked 4 times and it might have begun snowing in Detroit. Get it? Because Detroit is like hell. I guess a low payroll can't stop you from issuing a good old fashioned ass whooping as this recent beatdown saw the A's put up a 21 spot. Nearly every A starter had at least a pair of hits, only Matt Olson didn't because he walked three times and kudos to Miguel Almonte who got nobody out and gave up five earned runs in the sixth inning. Way to go little buddy. Remember when the D-backs were good? Well, the defending champs got whipped by the Dodgers like Zion Williamson's hopes and dreams on lottery night. The Dodgers 24 hit effort included three stolen bases in a game that was over by the fourth inning. Really? Three steals? Eddie Orapresa gets the shelled award as in 1.2 innings he gave up nine hits, 10 earned runs, and two bombs. D-backs first baseman Mark Grace pitched the ninth and only gave up one run, a home run to David Ross. Barry Bonds and the Giants showed no mercy as the large-headed steroid abuser went 3 for 3 with 3 ribs and a homer, and JT Snow added 5 RBI. Too bad all pitcher Sean Estes needed was one of those 18 runs as he tossed a 7-hit shutout, added 2 hits, and a home run. Sometimes you just have it. The Rays got off to a great start, leading 4-0 after two innings, and then they realized they were the early 2000 Rays, and things got ugly. Boston exploded for a 10-run six in which Noma hit two bombs in the inning. He finished with eight RBI on only three hits as he added yet another homer, a grand slam, the next inning. He also married Mia Hamm. Knocked that one out of the park. Willie Banks pitched the last four innings for a save in the 18-run blowout. Really? Kyle Davies got off to a bad start after only getting one batter out and giving up two runs, but he probably should have stayed in. Because Vin Mazzaro came in and threw gas on the fire, giving up 14 runs on 2.1 innings pitched. Matt Laporta went four for four with four RBI for the Indians.
Chris Spire was all over this one, going five for six and hitting for the cycle in the second time in his career as the Giants walloped the Cards in a 21-2 route. Only three pitchers for the Cards gave up all the runs as I guess they were having a contest. A contest of suck. John Tudor gave up five, Bob four seven, and Steve Peters eight. Winner. Twenty eighteen was a special year for blowouts, and it looks like the Marlins still haven't recovered from this early season beatdown. Poor Jeffrey Loria. Every Philly except pitcher Jake Thompson notched a hit as the team went 9-14 for 14 with runners in scoring position. Michael Franco had 6 RBI and has the absolutely most look at me spelling of the name Michael ever. You'd think more games in Denver would be on here, but this is our first, and surprisingly, only four dingers were hit. Two by Matt Holliday, who had eight RBI. Padre starter Woody Williams gave up nine earned runs and only notched one inning of work, as this one was over early. And former Little League pitcher turned third baseman Sean Burroughs came in late to give up three more runs. Jamie Wright, who was 5-18 and 18 coming into the game. Finally got some run support to offset his 5.58 ERA and notch the dub. What's that about more Denver games being on here? Well, this time the Rockies were the victim. The late Anthony Young actually won this game in relief and he got two hits as a batter. Sammy Sosa, probably fresh off his first cycle of withdrawal, went four for six with a homer as the Cubs jumped on Brett Saberhagen from the start and never let up. Ah, the good old days for the Twins, though Joe Maurer, 4 for 5, 6 RBI, 1 home run, outproduced Justin Morneau, who went 0 for 2 with 3 walks. Big Sexy took the L for the White Sox, but to his credit, only one of the 7 runs he gave up was earned. In the second, third baseman Wilson Bediment made an error, and then Bart got 2 outs and then gave up 7 runs that I guess should not have happened? But they did happen, like when Big Sexy hit a home run. Our first 20 run differential, this game started slow and just got steadily worse for the Pirates as Prince Fielder, Ryan Braun, and Jim Edmonds all hit bombs in the shutout win. Edmonds also had four hits. Joel Hanrahan gets the shell award. He gave up six runs in his one inning of work. Trevor Hoffman pitched a scoreless ninth, working with his largest lead ever. Our first mid 20th century entry, this was a matchup between two good teams, and the Reds were much better on this day. Scoring in all but one of their eight batting frames, the Reds pounded on the Dodgers like Johnny Sins, notching 27 hits. Harry Kraft went five for five with six RBI and hit for the cycle. Carl Doyle took the brunt, giving up 14 runs in four innings. He was traded after one more outing. Yeesh. Tough day for Denny Hawking, as he rarely started and this game he went 0 for 2 and made an error, while his teammates shellacked the Indians with 25 hits and Hawking's replacement Christian Guzman was the only other twin to not get a hit either. David Ortiz went 3 for 5 and somehow the twins traded him for a bag of peanuts. Luis Rivas, batting ninth, drove in 5 runs. Damn son. It's amazing that the Mets, whose first year was terrible, took 56 years to receive this ass whipping. One which SRS Mike from Stark Raving Sports actually got to watch from the stand. Of course he's a Mets fan. The Nats scored 19 runs in the first five innings as ex-Met Daniel Murphy hit two homers. Steve Matt started and only got two hitters out, eventually paving the way for Jose Reyes to throw some BP to the Nats. He gave up two home runs. Moneyball was fully underway as the 2000 Oakland A's bent over the Texas Rangers like they were at their urologist. Every Ranger pitcher except one gave up at least a run and the A's opened the game with a 9 run first and never looked back. Miguel Tejeda hit a salami, both Giambis got hits and I assume after everyone shared needles in the clubhouse.
The year after Chase Utley cussed to the whole world, the Phils put the hurt on Johnny Cueto and the Reds in historic fashion. Cueto never got out of the first as he gave up five hits and nine earned runs, two homers, and then was relieved by Danny Herrera who gave up a three-run homer to Utley. Pedro Felix went 0 for 5 while his mates all got hits. The Yankees took a stroll down reliever Jerry Lane, who pitched the last four frames and got pounded for 10 earned runs. Whitey Ford did it on both ends, pitching seven solid innings and going four for five with two RBI. Yogi Berra, who may or may not have said, it ain't over till it's over, but we knew this one was over in the first inning. The late Roy Holiday relieved in this game and boy did his team let him down as they committed two errors and he was charged with seven runs, zero of them earned. Albert Bell actually played, getting two hits and two RBI before breaking his leg and cashing checks for the rest of his life, then getting drunk and doing the helicopter in a parking lot. You can look that up. Tied for largest shutout win, the Pirates family of the 70s joyfully beat up the Cubs in Wrigley. Rennie Stinnett doubled to start the game and didn't let up, adding six more hits and going seven for seven with five runs scored. Rick Russell only got one hitter out and his brother Paul came into the game and pitched much better, the only hurler not to give up a run on the day. Before the stock market crash spiraled the country into Great Depression, the Phillies got a little taste of sadness, and America would later become the Detroit Lions. In front of their home fans, they yielded 28 runs, 20 of which came in two separate 10-run innings. Jim Bottomley led the charge with a home run and seven RBI. Neither Claude Willoughby, the starter, nor the first reliever, Elmer Miller, recorded an out. Our first dead ball era game, the Tigers scored 22 runs without hitting a single dinger. Ironically led by home run Baker, who had two hits, this ragtag bunch of players dressed in pure sheep's wool scored a lot of runs on this fine May day. Alan Travers of the Tigers pitched the entire game, giving up all 24 runs. Man, back then they just let you take your beating. And that's the way it was, we liked it. Two thousand four was hella rough for the Yankees. They got reverse swept. Aroid fought Jason Veritek, and they got blown the f out by the Indians late in the season. With most of the pieces of a championship team, they were held in check on this day with Javier Vasquez, Tanyan Sturtz, and Esteban Loaiza all giving up at least six runs. When you let Omar Vizquel go six for seven on you, it was a bad day. Bobby Shantz was a control pitcher, the Greg Maddox of his day. I don't think he was hitting his spots this game as he got lit up for nine runs in 1.2 innings of work. To his credit, he only walked one batter. None of his teammates were any better as they all gave up at least two runs. The Sox hit seven home runs led by Bob Neiman with two. Another dead ball era game, but this did include a home run from Eddie Grant, probably an inside the Parker. What's interesting is that the Reds were only up 14 runs at the start of their eighth and final at bat, then hung nine runs on the Boston Rustlers, AKA the Braves. Jiggs Parson pitched the last five innings and gave up four runs. Our penultimate entry, we finally have a blowout in which a team scored at least one run in every inning they batted. Also, there were no dings. Good old fashioned single and double baseball. Lefty O'Doul gave up 16 runs, though the box score only says three of them were earned. Dewey Medivier earned a three inning save for the Indians, which is the dumbest rule ever. Before we get to the big one, the worst playoff whipping was October 10th, 1999, when the Red Sox murdered the Indians 23 to seven in game four of the division series, a 16 run differential. Bartolo Colon also started that game. Definitely not sexy. And for our final worst major league pounding, You probably knew about this one, as it is not only the modern era single team record for runs in a game, 
it's also the biggest blowout. The amount of runs scored are almost as many characters as there are in Jared Saltalamacchia's name. The Rangers pounded out six home runs, two doubles, and probably stopped scoring because they got tired from running around the bases. What's funny is the Orioles actually led 3-0 after three innings, and then the wheels came off. The Rangers scored all of their runs in just four different at-bats, 10 coming in the eighth. Every Ranger starter had at least two hits. Travis Metcalf, the lone substitute, also had a hit. A grand slam. Brian Burris caught it hard. .2 innings pitched, eight runs all earned. Paul Shuey topped him with nine. And somehow, Wes Littleton earned a three-inning save in a game which his team won by 27 freaking runs. Did I mention the Rangers were a last place team that year? Ouch, Baltimore. Ouch. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I also did largest blowouts for every league. College football, probably next. I'm Five Points Bids, and you made it to the end of this video.